it is when we do that with a sincere heart that God himself will know that we are making prayer in the way we ought to make the prayer and then answer will be granted after wickedness against God has been confessed Daniel identified for the nation in confessing the sins of the nation and though he was a righteous man, as you look at his testimony in the scriptures, he prayed as a representative of the sinful nation. He also learned something. In a way that Daniel confessed the sins of the nation, he actually made the confession in various ways. Turn with me now to Daniel chapter 9, and I'm reading it from verse 5. He says, we have seen. And then he goes on, and then in verse 8, he tells us in verse 8, O oh Lord, to us belongeth confusion of faith, and, our, and to our king, and to our princes, and to our fathers, because, listen to it again, we have seen. And then he goes on, he comes to verse 11, he says, Ye, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the cause is upon us, and the oath that uh, is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because, listen to it again, we have seen against you. Then he goes on, and he comes on now to verse 15, O O now, now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee a uh, renown, and as at this day we have seen. Do you see that in that single prayer four times over? He said, We have seen, incidentally. Uh, the Hebrew word that he used when he said we have seen is that we have missed the mark. He said, we know the mark, we know the target, we know what you wanted us to do, and instead of going straight to the mark, we missed the mark, we deviated, we didn't do the way you wanted us to do. When you come to pray for the nation, you are confessing the sins of the nation, and you are telling God, we have gone astray, and it's not just the people over there, everybody, we're talking about it on a national level now, and you are not praying like, you know, with an attitude of holier than now, we are okay, the church is okay, my family is okay, if everybody behaved like me, there would have been no problem in the country. No, that's not how to pray. You identify. Number two, he said, look, come back to verse 5. He said, we have sinned and we have committed iniquity. He used another word here, which means when he said, we have committed iniquity, we have acted perversely. It looks like we didn't have the heart of men and the heart of women, and the hearts of creatures of God. We had the heart of animals, and we behave in a beastly manner. That's what Daniel was saying when he said, we have committed iniquity, we have acted perversely. Still look at verse 5, it tells us there, and we have done wickedly. In the original word he said, we have premeditated evil. Look at the assassins in the nation all those years. Look at how people lost their lives all those years. Premeditated evil that some people will sit down somewhere in a conspiracy and say, get rid of that man, get rid of that woman, get rid of that one. That's what Daniel was saying. He said, we as a nation, we have acted in such a way that we premeditated evil. Look at the latter part of verse 5. He said, we have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. Now he called it rebellion. He said, we have defied divine authority. We have resisted the authority as God upon us. You see, when you come to confess and you come to tell a God that God we are praying for the nation, then you come with all your heart body and you are not in a hurry. You come in the presence of God, even though you are saying we have sinned and we have committed iniquity and we have done perversely and we have done wickedly and we have rebelled and somebody will say just say it in one sentence and let's go because uh, we have rebelled, we have done perversely, we have done this, we have done that. It's, it means the same thing. No, when you come to confess the sin of the nation and you really want all these 70 years of captivity, everything to be turned around. You are not in a hurry. You take your time and you confess everything before the Lord. He is not finished. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, neither have we acted unto thy servants the prophet. He said, we know why we are suffering. 
He said, we know why we came into captivity. We know why it is we, do not, we cannot seek the sons of Zion anymore because we didn't listen to thy prophets which speak in thy name to our king and to our princes and to our fathers and to all the people of the land. And you will see there, he said, they are not hearkening to the word of the Lord. And I tell you that when you are praying like this, you cannot make it very well structured and, you know, grammatically and everything. Thing. Look at verse 10. He repeats the same thing. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. You say, Daniel, uh, stop all this repetition and make you with it and finish in time. We want to go. Ah, he said, if you are in a hurry when you are praying for your nation, you will never get any answer. If you are in a hurry when you are praying for the church, you will never get any answer. If you are in a hurry when you are even praying for your family or for yourself, you will never get any answer. Isn't that one of the problems? Problems we have today, we're too much impatient. We come to the Lord, we're looking at our reward, and we're saying now we ought to finish this in five minutes. If we don't finish in five minutes, something is going wrong here. And then we try to control everything so that we can finish in five minutes. Our prayers will not be answered, nothing will change, our lives will not be taught. The same thing for the church. When we come together, we want sinners to be saved, and we want believers to be sanctified. We want sanctified believers to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And if we're too much in a hurry, which is the tendency in our services nowadays uh, do this in five minutes and do that in two minutes and do that in three minutes and let's get over with it and finish everything and let's quit this place we want to go home in time it will not be church it will not be that we're coming in the presence of the Lord and we're laying a request before the Lord and we're patient before the Lord and we're saying Lord if it takes us two hours if it takes us three hours if it takes us the whole day we come because there is a problem and we're presenting the problem in the sight of the Lord, and we're not going to quit until we know we're prayed through, and we want the Lord to do something, and the Lord will do something in Jesus' name. And give me a greater amen. It means you are going to cooperate with God. If you want to come to church, come to church. If you don't want to come to church, then you know you are not in church. Once you are in church, in the church, in the presence of God, you will not be in a hurry. We study the Bible, we sing unto the Lord, we take our time, we pray, we open our heart before the Lord, we say, Lord, here is a problem. Our families have problems. Our states have problems. The nation has problems. Everything is upside down. Look at the city. It is very difficult to walk in the city without being afraid of your life and now look at it now if you compare our houses now and you compare the houses to the houses of 20 years ago everywhere is barricaded there is a high gate almost around every house why we are afraid and every every street now if you want to get to that street by 10 o'clock they have locked the gate and then if you want to go back and take the other street they have locked the gate gates everywhere why do you think they are doing that nobody is secured everybody is afraid whether it's a central city here or in even the local places, everybody is afraid. That's why we're coming to the Lord and we're saying, Oh God, things will change in this country. I said things will change in this country. That is, if we will take it seriously and we come before the Lord and we say, This is not child's play. We need to take the problems of the nation before the Lord and we're not in a hurry. And the Lord Himself, He will turn everything around. I said, They will turn everything around. The good old days will come back to our country once again in Jesus' name. Don't you need to pray for the nation then? Don't you understand what we are talking about? Now you, you know what people say now when they say it's no more 111, it's now 101. What do you mean by that? It's no more a breakfast and lunch and supper. That's 111. It's now 101. You take breakfast, then you manage yourself wherever you can do drink water, whatever it is in the afternoon. That's zero. And then in the evening, maybe if you can manage, you take a meal. And somebody that has. That you have been blessed with this powerful message. Our bottom, our address is at the bottom of the uh, of the screen. I believe you will join us one of this Sunday to worship together. Thank you. God bless you. Let us pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name and thank you, Lord, because of this powerful message. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will touch those people who are in need of salvation, those people who are in need of prosperity, those people who are in need of healing. And the power, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they will give testimony because of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh,
say it one more time, say, oh, 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 Lord. 